Okay, in this video we are going to talk about separation of variables, which is something that tends to scare people but really shouldn't, um, and we're going to do a couple of examples. So uh, let's get started. So in general you're going to do two things, and uh, it's kind of in the name. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to separate and try to get the independent variable on one side, the dependent variable on the other side, and then after you've done that you basically just integrate. So it's really like two separate integration problems. Um, so there's a couple things that, if you really understand them, can help you a lot. So you're going to see things like uh, dy dx, you might see something like dv dr, um, dh dt, they could really throw any variables at you. Um, the key thing to know is that when you're looking at these things, you've got the x, the r, and the t, those, whatever falls down there kind of in that template, um, is the independent variable. So you want to remember that, so in kind of the denominator is the independent variable. Um, and when I solve these, and I in general recommend this, uh, you're going to bring everything that involves the independent variable over to the right hand side. Um, so we're going to do that. And then when you look at kind of the numerator, you see you got y, v, and h. Those are uh, your dependent variables. And you want to move everything that involves those to the left. And that's kind of how we separate. Um, so there's a couple things that can happen, one of which is. Um, there could just be a constant multiple, and if there's a constant multiple, uh, I recommend that you always just leave that on the right-hand side or move it to the right-hand side um, of the equation uh, because that's just kind of helpful, um, and it makes it a little easier to integrate on the left-hand side. And uh, a second thing that can happen is that there's no guarantee that the independent variable is actually going to be there before you integrate. Um, so that's fine, uh, and don't freak out about it. That's one of the things people tend to freak out about. So you might see something like dp dt is equal to 6p. So when you look at that, 6p, um, there's no t there. But not having a t there doesn't really impact anything. Um, I'm going to do the thing where I leave the constant multiple on the right-hand side, and I'm going to separate, and I end up with dp over p is equal to 6 dt. Um, and then from there, I would just integrate both sides like they're entirely separate problems. Um, so let's, let's do an example. Um, oh, there's one other thing that I left out here. Uh, when you integrate, I always put plus C on the side with the independent variable, and you'll see that in both examples that we do. So here is the problem. We have dh dt is equal to negative one-fourth the quantity h minus 27, and uh, we also know that h of 0 is going to be 91. So this is motivated by um, the 2017 AP exam. I had a question that looked a lot like this. It actually was this, I think. But you didn't have to actually integrate this. And I don't know why, because you totally could have. So um, when you look at this, you can see t is the independent variable. And if you look on the right-hand side there, there's no t. That's not really a problem for us, um, but it's a thing. And then h is the dependent variable. And you can see there are some h's on the right-hand side. So when we separate, we want to bring that over to the left-hand side. So let's separate. So we get dh over um, h minus 27 is equal to, I'm going to leave the constant multiple on the right-hand side, so the negative one-fourth is just going to stay there, negative one-fourth, and bring the dt over. So we have this, and then from here what we want to do is integrate. So it's two kind of separate integration problems. On the left-hand side, we have dh over h minus 27, if you've been doing a lot of integrals, you'll recognize that's a natural log. So it's a natural log. Don't forget the absolute value. Absolute value of h minus 27 is equal to on the right-hand side. So it's negative 1 fourth dt. When you integrate that, you get negative 1 fourth times t. And then I'm going to put plus c on this side because this is the side with the independent variable. And uh, now what I usually do with these, if you're going to um, exponentiate, so to solve for h is what we want to do. Um, exponentiate first, then solve. And that'll save you from a lot of problems that you can run into with this particular type. So what happens is I'm going to exponentiate. I'm going to drop the absolute value and also move c. So um, there's another video where I really explain what's happening here. Um, but in general, this is what will happen. You have h minus 27 is it's a new c because that c is really... Um, e to the original c and then plus or minus because of the absolute value, but we combine everything and just call it a brand new c, so I change color there. Um, so we have h minus 27 is equal to this new c, e to the negative 1 fourth t. Um, now what we want to do is use this initial condition, h of 0 is 91, to solve for c. So substitute in for everything, 
e to the 0 is 1, so really we have 64 is equal to c times 1, so c is 64. We want to go back up to this step right here and substitute back in. So h minus 27 is 64, e to the negative 1 fourth t. And then when you're doing these problems, you want to solve for the dependent variable, so we want to solve for h. So our final answer to this example is going to be 27, well, h is equal to 27 plus 64 e to the negative 1 fourth t. And there you go. Let's take a look at another example. So in this problem, we have dw dt is equal to w squared over t minus 4, and we know that w of 3 is equal to 2. Um, I noticed something in this problem right away, and it's this t minus 4 in the denominator here. Um, that has a, a discontinuity, right? t cannot equal 4. So we need to think about what it means for something to be the solution to a differential equation. So here it is. The solution to a differential equation must be continuous on an interval, well it's a function that is continuous on an interval containing the initial condition. So since there's a vertical asymptote at t equals 4, either the domain of our solution is going to be t is less than 4 or t is greater than 4. And we're going to decide which of those to pick based on the initial condition. So this says w of 3 is equal to 2. The key thing there is that t can be 3. So since t can be 3, the choice we need to make must be that t is less than 4, because if we chose t is greater than 4, we couldn't even go through the initial condition, and that would be a big problem. So we have to keep this in mind kind of for our final answer, but it's not going to impact anything until then. So let's, uh, let's solve this. So we want to get everything with a w on the left-hand side, um, because that is our dependent variable, and everything with a t, including the dt, on the right-hand side. So we're going to end up with dw over w squared, is dt over t minus 4, and now this becomes just two integrals that we want to solve. Um, on the left hand side, I'm going to, in my mind, call it w to the negative second, and then add 1 to get w to the negative first, and multiply by the reciprocal of negative 1, which gives me negative w to the negative first. And then that's equal to, on the right hand side, we get a natural log again, so equals the natural log, don't forget the absolute value of t minus 4, and then we put the plus c on the side with the independent variable, so on this side. And what I'm going to do is I don't need to exponentiate to um, get w by itself, so I'm going to solve for c right now. So I'm going to use the initial condition, w of 3 is equal to 2. So it's negative quantity 2 to the negative first. Natural log of the absolute value of 3 minus 4. That absolute value is really important because you can't actually find the absolute value of negative 1, but the absolute value makes it, uh, sorry, the natural log of negative 1 but the absolute value makes it the natural log of positive 1, and that is 0, which is definitely something you should remember. So we get negative 1 half is equal to c. Let's go back to here and substitute that in. So negative 1 over w is natural log of absolute value of t minus 4 minus 1 half. I'm going to multiply through by a negative. I like to take this a step at a time so I don't make some kind of uh, silly mistake. So we have this. And then uh, I'm going to take the reciprocal of everything to get w by itself. So it's 1 over 1 half minus the absolute natural log of the absolute value of t minus 4. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to include the domain that we worked out before. So such that t is less than 4. I'm going to box it, and I'm going to leave my answer like that. There's a lot you can do with that answer, but uh, I think we solved for w. We stated the domain, so we really solved this equation, the separable differential equation. Um, Alright, that's kind of the whole thing. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck!